Hello, hello, hello! My name is Shancy and welcome to my channel. On this channel I mostly talk about curvy fashion for size 16 and I do everyday makeup looks, we do giveaways, I review beauty products. So thank you for joining if this is your first time and if you're back for more Shancy videos, thank you so much. I hope that you guys will consider subscribing before we move along. This video is a little bit different because it's March and it's also Endometriosis Awareness Month. I have endometriosis and I thought I would share my journey because there's actually not a lot of research and awareness about endometriosis. And also if you're wondering what's with the yellow, yellow is the color of Endometriosis Awareness Month. So before I get into deep into my personal journey with endometriosis, I thought I would start with explaining what endometriosis is. Picture a healthy woman who has endometrial cells within the lining of her uterus. Every month that lining grows and it sheds and that's her period. A woman with endometriosis, or actually it is found in men as well, have endometrial cells that grow outside of the uterus. So they can accumulate around the organs, um, around your ovaries, some uh, endometrial cells have been found like in the brain, on the lungs, on the colon. Um, and so they too react just as your period cells would. And so they will activate and grow and shed when you get your period. That's why women with endometriosis typically are constantly in pain and have extremely painful periods, lots of cramping. So because this period reaction is happening all over the body, what happens is after all those cells kind of shed, so you get your period outside of your uterus, all that stuff accumulates and then it starts gunking up and sticking to your organs and it kind of creates like cobwebs between, um, between your organs. So sadly they don't have a lot of research on endometriosis and I think um, there's more awareness now and more women are kind of diagnosing themselves with it. Um, but it basically one in ten women will officially have endometriosis. Not only do people not know very much about it, a lot of times physicians don't know too much about it. Um, so I'm hoping that this video will help uh, family physicians or residents, like people that are newer in their practice, to kind of consider that painful periods are not normal and uh, to just listen to women who are complaining uh, women who have so much pain that they typically can't go to work, can't go to school, and I'll share my own experience with that. With women who have endometriosis, the long-term effect is infertility and um, just managing the, the menstrual pain, the cramping uh, on a long-term scale. So when it comes to diagnosing endometriosis, it's very difficult um, because they actually physically have to go inside and check if you have the endometrial cells outside of your uterus. The surgery is minimal invasive surgery, which means they don't have to cut you up, but they put rods through your stomach, um, and it's called laparoscopic surgery. So they do it with little cameras and little tools, and so that will confirm whether you have um, endometriosis. Now, the other tricky part is to get to that point may take years and years. So whether they're trying to figure out why you have so much pain or whether they're trying to figure out why you're not able to have kids, um, you know, sometimes it could take up to seven years to get diagnosed and to get to the point where you're actually getting your surgery. So then let's say you see the specialist. A lot of times, like in Ottawa, the case is that I had to wait one year to get that surgery. And we had already confirmed that I had cysts in my ovaries, which was an indication of stage four endometriosis so that we didn't need that surgery to, to actually qualify me. So in my case, when you have stage four endometriosis, the ovaries um, get filled with this endometrial blood or cells, uh, and they start kind of growing like little balloons. So I had one that was eight centimeters on one, on one ovary, another cyst was 10 centimeters. Those were causing pain, and those are basically the confirmation that you have endometriosis. Between doctors not knowing very much about it, and between there being a lack of research, a, a long delay um, in diagnosis, there, there's a waiting list once you get confirmed that you have it and you need surgery. There's just, women are just suffering this whole time. So it's one thing 
to have these delays, but unfortunately we're experiencing lots of different symptoms while we're waiting. So whether it's pain, whether it's infertility, um, quality of life, all that. So that's what it's like to be a woman living with endometriosis. So how many people does endometriosis affect? Right now the stats say 1 in 10 women have endometriosis. Some women don't actually experience any issues with it, um, especially if they have kids at a younger age. And that's why it's been called uh, the working woman's disease, which I hate. Um, but generally women who are waiting to have kids uh, later in their life will experience more issues because it's like you're allowing all these years of accumulation of that blood and that gunk and then that's going to cause you more issues down the road. My personal story with endometriosis. Honestly, I think it started way back when in high school when I got my period. I remember I used to have such heavy periods. And again, it was like, I don't know why I equated it to like, oh, I'm like healthy, like lots of period is a good sign. I don't know why I made that conclusion. Um, but yeah, very heavy periods, like always leaking. I wish I had like better management on that when I was younger. The next thing was like painful periods. So the older I got, so by university time, my period was unbearable. Like I remember not being able to work or just like hiding in the bathroom and just sitting on the toilet because it just made you feel better to have your like pelvis kind of come down. Um, yeah, like hiding in the bathroom for, for a while when I was like on, when I was working. Um, and I remember this one time, it was brutal. This was more in university days. I was, I had to take the bus home um, from my shift. I left work early and I was literally on the bus bench, like keeled over and just dying, dead. I get like, I used to get all like gray, pale and like nauseous from the pain and then I would vomit from the pain and it's like how is that normal how can someone like live their life like that so then of course I've taken all the Advil in my life who knows what my lining in my stomach looks like by now um, then doctors will prescribe anaprox which is naproxen which is a, an anti-cramping pill which I didn't realize so I wasn't taking it properly but you can take those two together and you're supposed to take it before the cramping starts. And then the other thing is birth control. And a lot of times when like young girls will go in complaining of um, heavy bleeding or painful periods, they'll be given birth control. And at the time when I was offered birth control, I was like, no, like I want more answers. But in the end, I would highly urge young women to get on the pill to stop the period completely and just like preserve the health of your fertility until you're ready to have kids. I think where uh, the healthcare system is lacking is to explain that situation, to explain that if you are in fact, uh, if you do in fact have endometriosis, we want to stop you from having your period for as long as you can and preserve the integrity of like of your ovaries, of your uterus, so that when you're ready to have kids, you stop taking your pill and then you're kind of like healthy again. I had gone on uh, birth control for a couple years when I met my husband or my boyfriend at the time, um, but I was just not reacting well to the, the hormones. I gained so much weight. I was like not good in my head. Um, and I think that's, that's the unfortunate thing with endometriosis that is that hormones are your only best friend at this point, but it comes with a toll because it comes with a whole other slew of side effects. Always knew I had painful periods, uh, heavy periods. Then, um, this is probably almost about 10 years ago, I worked for a women's health association and one of our projects was endometriosis. And then, so we're working on it. I used to work in um, public education and, and sexual health. And so here I am reading up on it, reading the guideline, which I can uh, give you guys a whole bunch of uh, resources if you're interested. Um, I'm reading this, like painful periods, heavy periods, all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I think I have this. I never heard of endometriosis before in my life. That kind of stuck with me. And I was like, this is so weird. I can, I have all of these, um, all of the symptoms. 
So anyways, that happened, learned a lot about it because obviously I felt like I had it, but at the same time, when you work there, anything you read, you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh my god, I have this. Like, <laughs> you should never use Dr. Google, but there, that always kind of stuck with me. I was like, I'm, I know I have endometriosis. There's, you just read everything and you're like, I know that I have it. So fast forward to when I was pregnant with my son. So the first time I got pregnant, um, I had stopped birth control, uh, then got pregnant right away, and then I miscarried after three months, which was also very hard. Um, then it took me a year to get pregnant again with my son, that he's six years old now. Bless, he's my miracle baby. I officially found out I had endometriosis because I had an ultrasound when I was pregnant and they found a two centimeter cyst on my right ovary. So like I was saying earlier, when they find the cyst in your ovary, that's a confirmation that you have endometriosis. Um, the funny thing was I, when I was getting my ultrasound, the ultrasound tech was like, yeah, this is your, your cyst, whatever. I think what they're looking at when you're pregnant is that they don't want it to burst and they don't want it to, to swing. It could swing over the ovary and cause a lot of pain. Um, luckily, I was okay in that. But then she went on and she was like, oh, uh, I think I started crying. And then she was like, oh, no, don't worry. It's not cancerous. And I was like, cancerous? I'm not thinking about cancer right now. I'm just like, frig, I have endometriosis, and like, what does that mean, and so anyways, it's, it's so funny, but um, I do think that, I, I haven't looked into too much about the cancerous part, because I, it kind of scares me, um, but I do believe that it can cause cancer, um, but yeah, that's for, that's for another day, another video, I'm not there yet in my head. So, you know, had Victor, it was a tough pregnancy, I had preeclampsia, wasn't able to breastfeed, and it's funny because I knew another girl who struggled uh, with getting pregnant, also had, uh, she had endometriosis, she also couldn't breastfeed and also had preeclampsia. And then once I started talking to my specialist, he he kind of confirmed that a lot of women with endometriosis will have preeclampsia, which is interesting because it's like, it's like your blood flow, it's um, blood pressure and like just stress all around and in, inside your body. I have a lot of like little theories about endometriosis and that's what I'm going to share in my personal story. As I was saying, I had my the small cyst in my right ovary. Um, you know, years went on and I think I got distracted because I was, you know, new mommy and looking after Victor and trying to figure that out. Um, and I think I just like left my health, like just whatever. When Victor was two, I got a new job. Um, so they had a gym at work and I was like working out more, whatever, looking, uh, I was like really fit, really healthy. And then um, this one day, actually, this is what really triggered it. I was on my deathbed. Like literally, I could not move. My face was green. I was like, what is happening? Like I am literally dying. They actually called the ambulance. They brought me to the hospital. Uh, as ironic as this is, they told me I was pregnant as my diagnosis and I was like, okay, like I think we were using condoms at the time and I knew that it was like hard for me to get pregnant so I was like, what? Like of course I was like over the moon happy. Um, and then yeah, jokes on me, wasn't pregnant. Um, but then what happened is they saw both huge cysts on that ultrasound and it's kind of like like reality struck me again and I was like oh yeah shit I can't ignore this like I I remember hearing about the cyst when I was pregnant but I had never even like paid attention otherwise and here we were I had an eight centimeter cyst on my left ovary 10 centimeter cyst on my right ovary and um, that was like the trigger and I was like shit I gotta like get on this so number of appointments I went to see my gynecologist he kind of wasn't like really into it like he wasn't taking me seriously and I was like what the hell man I want these things gone so I remember going to him and saying like I have two requests the first thing is I want to manage my pain for my period because I can't take this anymore and again that was like my normal to have painful period so I was like maybe he can like help me there and then the second thing is I was like I think I want to get pregnant so I have two goals 
and unfortunately those two goals are like counteracting each other because to get the pain away I need to get on birth control therefore can't get pregnant um, so anyways this was like a two three year journey and if I can find it I want to insert um, it's a video that I never showed anyone I recorded it on my phone this might be the time to do it um, but it was a it was just a painful new reality that I had to deal with Hey guys, um, so I'm sitting here in my car after my appointment, um, and I just like, there's so much going on in my head right now. So about a month ago, I was formally, officially diagnosed with endometriosis, uh, which I suspected that I had because I have so much pain during my, my menstrual cycle, and um, I just, I completely fit the bill, but what's weird with endo is that they can't diagnose it until they see it so my first thing is if you ever suspect that you have some kind of health condition just be persistent and get it looked at because we know our bodies and we know when things aren't right so just listen to yourself that's my first thing the second thing is I don't know trust your gut or I don't know I'm in such a weird mood right now I feel like I've gotten so much information and it's almost like too much information is worse for you and what I mean by that is as soon as I said that I had endometriosis I got people flooding me with different information and I'm so grateful that I got help from everyone but sometimes too much information makes us more scared it uh, it kind of brings up more questions and then we don't have those answers, so we have more fears. Um, it's that whole ignorance is bliss, so sometimes less is better. Um, so now I'm at a point where I have two cysts, and one in each of my ovaries. Uh, I just did a, a test called saline infusion and tubal uh, patency, so that checks if your tubes are clear. And okay, good news, yay, my tubes are clear, but if my ovaries are garbage it's useless to me so now the doctor talked about IVF and to be honest I'm so scared I I'm terrified of the stress I'm terrified of the weight gain this is so stupid but yes I've been working so hard at maintaining my weight and now I have to take hormones that are gonna make me heavier and I know in the grand scheme of things it's for a baby and I don't know I'm allowed to not want to gain weight okay and it's not it has nothing to do with vanity it's everything else um, so now I'm at a point where I have to book an appointment with an IVF and that scares me and I don't know I just have all these thoughts and then there's also a chance that I can get pregnant because I have been pregnant before um, so anyways I don't after that I finally got in to see a surgeon and this is like years and years in the making it's like a three-year journey finally got my surgery date June 7th I was so excited I'm like yes get these huge cysts out of me they were so painful I was seeing a fertility specialist who was gonna time with the surgeon so after he was done with removing the cysts we were going to go right into fertility so that took me a year to get on the list um so finally got my got the cysts removed surgery went well but what ended up happening is that i could never pass the phases to go through the fertility testing and i was going to be on like one of the most aggressive protocols which is like you know all the needles like three four times a day and thousands of dollars just because the medication's not covered. I decided to just wrap that all up in a bow and just let it go so that it was my decision because I was just tired of, you know, trying to have a baby and that pressure and uh, my business was growing and I felt like it was distracting me and thank God for it because it was the only thing that was bringing me joy at the time. But it was really hard and I'm sure that a lot of you out there uh, who s suffer from infertility can relate and you have your own journey. What I just did was um, I, I decided to focus all my energy on the one golden miracle child that I do have. Like he's healthy, he's perfect, he's smart, he's funny, 
Uh, he's a cutie patootie. I mean, I, I, I'm literally blessed and I just felt like this was my time to devote myself to him um, and to just pay more attention to him because I, I didn't consider myself like the best mom because I was working full time, growing my Instagram business and my blog business. Um, so anyways, now I'm hashtag blessed and um, every, every time I look at him I'm like, oh my god, thank god I have you. Fast forward all of this to like present day and, and about for six months now I've had excruciating back pain, like excruciating back pain. I'm on a new journey now and I'm getting tons of pelvic floor therapy and I'm also getting physio for my core. So my core is shot. I have extremely tight muscles in my pelvic floor. So this is my new reality. I need to stretch tons. I need to relax a little bit because my pelvic floor therapist was saying that women with endometriosis present with like a very stressful pelvis. Um, and it's like, yeah, no wonder, like all this cramping and all this stuff in there. Um, so yeah, I've really had to figure out a way, like just how to relax a little bit more. Um, and I'm still going through this journey, to be honest, right now. Like, my back pain is better than it has been, like when I went to Costa Rica, I like couldn't even walk. It was really brutal. Uh, so I'm feeling better now, but doing my stretches when I have time, like I'm supposed to do all these stretches every single day um, and I have this thing called a crystal wand and I have to do internal massages um, and it's just, it's a lot, you know, I'm like, I just like want to have a normal life and not be in pain all the time. So it's funny how when you have endometriosis you're just like, you're switching your pain for something else. After my surgery and after I kind of wrapped up that whole fertility thing, then I started Vizan, which is a progesterone only uh, pill, like a birth control pill, and you take it continuously. You don't like give yourself your period. Um, so it definitely shut off my period, which was great, but then it was also causing a whole bunch of side effects. I was so swollen, I was depressive. Um, it was just not pretty. Like I was so swollen, my rings didn't even fit and I had to take all my rings off, especially in the summertime. Um, I felt like really swollen, I gained weight, it was just not good for me. So in August, I stopped taking that pill and I started uh, the Morena IUD, had that inserted. It was painful, It was I was crampy for a good couple weeks, um, now I don't feel it at all, um, it's perfectly fine. It's definitely not strong enough to cut my period out, um, but... That being said, I definitely don't have those mood swings, I don't have the depression, don't have the swelling, and I've been able to kind of lose that water weight that I had gained. I'm still trying to lose a little bit more weight, uh, but and I feel like I'm kind of uh, working against a medication, which is always really difficult, so I'll have to like change my diet even more um, if I want to like move the scale. So... That's my story. That is my endometriosis journey. I'm sorry if it was a little bit long, but um, this is my life. Like it's been over probably a good seven, eight years of me trying to figure things out. Um, and I am a champion for endometriosis. And when women tell me they have like all those symptoms, I'm like, please get in to see your doctor. Please consider this and talk to them about it. And just like, raise that awareness among them because unless uh, they personally have it or know someone who has it, people don't think about endometriosis as like a severe thing. Thank you so much guys for watching. I will put down uh, some links down below if you are interested in learning more about endometriosis. Also, I'm helping my local Ottawa hospital raise money for endometriosis. So my surgeon, uh, Dr. Singh, is uh, creating his team as he always does for the May 8th um, Run for a Reason and he's raising money for his unit uh, which is minimal invasive surgery. So these types of surgeries help women with endometriosis and fibroids and other gynecological issues that don't necessarily merit uh, a full-on surgery. So uh, thank you to his team. This is not sponsored by any means. I just really want to help raise awareness and maybe raise some money for uh, for surgery. So I'll leave a link down below. 
I really appreciate you guys sticking around this long and listening to my personal story. I know usually I'm doing, uh, you know, more funny stuff or I'm doing makeup, uh, but this is part of my reality and it's still a journey that I'm on right now. So I hope I was able to enlighten you and inform you and raise awareness on endometriosis. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, that's the circle over here, and watch more videos down here. See you in the next video! Bye!